بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today is Thursday 27th of October 2022 and uh, this morning I will recite some verses from Surah Al-Ankabut which means spider أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولا تجادلوا أهل الكتاب إلا بالتي هي أحسن إلا الذين ظلموا منهم وقولوا آمنا بالذي أنزل إلينا وأنزل إليكم وإلهنا وإلهكم واحد ونحن له مسلمون وكذلك أنزلنا إليك الكتاب فالذين آتيناهم الكتاب يؤمنون به ومن هؤلاء من يؤمن به وما يجحد بآياتنا إلا الكافرون وما كنت تتلو من قبله من كتاب ولا تخطه بيمينك إذا لارتاب المبطلون بل هو آيات بينات في صدور الذين أوتوا العلم وما يجحد بآياتنا إلا الظالمون وقالوا لولا أنزل عليه آيات من ربه قل إنما الآيات عند الله وإنما أنا نذير مبين أولم يكفهم أن ما أنزلنا عليك الكتاب يتلى عليهم أولم يكفهم أن أنزلنا عليك الكتاب يتلى عليهم إن في ذلك لرحمة وذكرى لقوم يؤمنون قل كفى بالله بيني وبينكم شهيدا يعلم ما في السماوات والأرض والذين آمنوا بالباطل وكفروا بالله أولئك هم الخاسرون. Allah subhanahu wa taala is telling us the way to behave with the people of the scripture. So when we say people of the scripture, we mean those who have Bible at their hand. So when we talk about Bible, we mean by the Bible, the contemporary Bible or the Bible after it has been corrupted uh, by the Jews and Christians. They changed, they, they have hidden information, they have altered the information. So it wasn't, the, these Bibles at our hand today are not in the form which Allah has revealed on Musa alayhi salam or on Isa, Jesus alayhi salam. So that means it could contain some text. So the 100% of the text is not corrupted. So still it would preserve some of the words of Allah, some of the contents in the intact form and it would contain uh, corruptions. So, so when we engage with the people of the scripture in discussion about the book or about religious matters and they bring Bible as their reference and we bring Quran as our reference, we need to um, know this background, right? We have to know this background and then engage in a very healthy debate with them. So don't argue with them except in the best way, okay? Whether it is in the behavior, in terms of argumentation. Uh, so, so this is an art and the skill uh, which Muslims should follow. They, they cannot just attack the Bible and say that 100% is wrong, or they cannot take everything as a right. So, so we have to benchmark with the with the Quran. And that's why Allah is telling us in this verse, "Qulu amanna billadi unzila ilayna wa unzila ilaykum wa ilahuna wa ilahukum wahid." So there are lots of common grounds. Okay, we have a common ground of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We 
can discuss this matter okay and uh, so there could be lots of healthy engagement with the Christians and Jews sometimes the problem is that the generalization when we we try to engage with with other religions we become very hostile um, um, so this is the lack of wisdom lack of hikmah okay? uh, and here Allah say, telling us is that often it is very helpful when you engage in debate is to leverage on the common things don't start uh, from the very beginning uh, uh, discussing the points of differences start with the points of uh, commonality and the points of agreement and leverage on that to touch upon the points of difference and scientifically with hikma with good uh, mm, uh, with 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 good arguments you can proceed with uh, a, a, and achieve achieve a lot okay so that's why Allah is saying is that Pudu and say manna billadhi unzila ilayna wa ilaykum we believe on whatever has been revealed to you and to to us and to you right so so this is the justice that alhamdulillah we muslims enjoy that we we do not go to extremes we say about isa alayhi salam he is a prophet and a rasul and one of the leading messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among the elite five messengers which are prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam nuh alayhi salam ibrahim musa and isa these are the five ulul azm in rusul so we give the due respect to isa alayhi salam but then from this we go and uh, and address the issues of difference with christians who elevate him to the status of a godhood or the status of Allah, which is a shirk. Okay. So, so whereas the Jews might have went to the other extreme, they said that Isa is a product of uh, illegal marriage or illegal sex. Okay. Ta'ala Allah. And billah min dalik. So. So this is the characters of Muslims that it's not because our enemy loves somebody that means I have to hate that other other somebody. Okay, this is this is not the case. It, it should not be the case. Our our objective is to establish the judgment. Okay, so it's the same debate like between the Sunnah and the Shia, right? If the Shia over uh, love Ali and raise his status to a certain level okay that doesn't mean that we the Sunnah people of the Sunnah have to uh, curse Ali for example okay? so you can always maintain these things okay so this is the this is the etiquette wa nahnu lahu muslimun because our whole objective is to submit and that's the meaning of Islam is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that submission means establishing the judgment even if that judgment comes against us against oneself against our father our mother our brother okay if it comes against us we have to establish the judgment So, Alhamdulillah, the good thing is that this Quran that is uh, that is within, in front of us, is is full of wisdom and in the intact form. That's the value of the Quran. Is that you, we are hundred percent sure that there. There were no corruptions or alterations or insertions or deletions or amendments to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And this is the, the value that we should give to the Quran. And, and those after seeing this value and power of the Quran still wants to cover it. Pretend that no, this is not the case. 
Allah has given them two titles here Kafirun and Zalimun in this in these verses that I have recited. وَمَا يَجْحَدُ بِآيَاتِنَا إِلَّا الْكَافِرُونَ And in, in, in the following verses وَمَا يَجْحَدُ بِآيَاتِنَا إِلَّا الظَّالِمُونَ Because this is the, the biggest form of injustice when you have the clear Qur'an and you leave it and go to some other books, some other sources this is the definition of a zalim right? and this is the definition of a kafir and kafir means which is again in the English root of the word kafir is cover okay cover kafir this the, the English root word perhaps came from the Arabic root word of kafir kafir means somebody who covers like the farmer who cultivates the seed he buries it under the earth and covers it so so from linguistically or literally um, a uh, farmer from this sense is a kafir because he covers the seed uh, okay so similarly if you have this book still you want to bury it you don't want to uh, make the book rule us rule our everyday decisions everyday life everyday contemporary situations if you don't want to if we don't want to elevate the quran and the status of a ruler a hakim Okay, and, and implement it in our daily life, in our social life, in our political life, in all forms of life, then we are yajhad. This is the denial of the Quran. Okay. And another characteristics of Quran, which perhaps the, peop the Bible, uh, the people who are custodians of the Bible, they, they could not do it, which is bal huwa ayatun this Quran is in the hearts of the its adherents so you will find in the Muslim world those non-Arabs in Indonesia, Malaysia, Bangladesh, Pakistan to the Arab world, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Algeria, Libya to the other to the Africa, to everywhere, Arabs or non-Arabs, you'll find someone 10 years old, he memorizes the Quran and he can correct the Imam when he recites the Quran. Millions of people memorizing this Quran since the, since the time of observation until now, you see, and it is easy to memorize the Quran. And I just recited few verses while driving from my memorization right so 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved the Quran not only in the book form okay because that might um, somebody can come and uh, and collect all the copies and and destroy it and these things no but how can you destroy things that is in the heart of the people okay ayatun bayyinatun fi sudur alladheena utul ilm so if we have such powerful contents, which is the Qur'an, preserved in book form, preserved in the hearts of millions of children and adults and old age people, and it has all these valuable things, after all such things, how can one ask something more than this? Everything is there. How can one ask something else? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the, the people at the time of the Prophet and it continues this trend until today. They say, لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ قُلْ إِنَّمَا الْآيَاتُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَإِنَّمَا أَنَا نَذِيرٌ مُّبِينٌ أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ They start to ask something else bring something else أو بدل إتي بقرآن غير هذا أو بدل as Allah said in another place perhaps in Surah Yunus that uh, well, uh, we don't want this Quran can you just change it to another book so to these people Allah says أولم يكفهم أن أنزلنا عليك الكتاب يتلى عليهم isn't it enough this Quran that has been recited upon them it would have been enough this six 
uh, this uh, 77 or 78,000 words. It's not a very huge book. If it was like volumes, one could say that, no, oh Allah, this is too, too long for us. It's only 78,000 words. And it is in front of you, available at your disposal, everywhere, every time, in the hearts of the people. Awalam yakfihim, isn't that enough for them? Inna fi dhalika la rahmatan wa dhikra li qawmi yu'minun. That's why for the Quran to be, to, to, to yield its treasures, there needs to be a receiving heart, a receiving person. So Quran is very, Quran has its own pride. It won't go and try to uh, to yield and give its jewels and treasures to somebody who doesn't value it. He says, Ma salam, I'm going to somewhere else. So that's why, uh, that's why we need to prepare ourselves like a fertile land. When the land is fertile, then when you put seed in it, it will flourish into healthy plant. So a, a healthy seed itself is not enough. You need to have the receiving ends. That's why this content of the Quran by itself is not enough. It needs to be have a, uh, it needs to have the receiving end, which is the belief, the taqwa, the iman, the respect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hearts. If we have that, then you will see that the Quran becomes a rahmah, a book of mercy, a book of guidance. That's what Allah said, La rahmatan wa dhikra li qawmi yu'minun. It's a reminder, it's a mercy, uh, it's a guidance. Not for everybody, li qawmi yu'minun, to the people who believe. That's why, uh, that's why somebody who doesn't believe just reads the Quran without any belief or perhaps wants to challenge the Quran and this and that, uh, often they don't feel any taste or beauty or sweetness for these verses. And that's what Allah made it very clear at the very beginning of this Quran. When you start to open the first page of the Quran, this fact comes in front of you. Alif la meem dhalik al kitabu la rayba fi hudan lil muttaqeen. This book is a guidance for the muttaqeen, for the fearful person who fears Allah, who has the taqwa, who has the love, who, who works day and night to satisfy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid what dissatisfies him. Right? This is the taqwa. So let us then take from these verses, these lessons, let us study the Quran, uh, give it its proper due respect and value, so the Quran will give back to us, and let us engage with healthy discussion with others, because a believer, when he has this valuable asset, which is the Quran, he doesn't stay at home, he goes out and proclaims this message. Whenever he finds opportunity, he tries to share this beauty and sweetness that he got to others so that they can also be illuminated. They can also feel this sweetness. This is the least we can do to our fellow believers, non-believers, mankind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and hidayah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa